Mulaney, they set. We are all about the offensive line on today's show. Hello and welcome to Lions Training Camp Live presented by Rocket Mortgage. I'm your host, Tori Petri. Yep, we are going to be talking about the big fellas, as Lomas Brown calls them. He will be joining us later on in the show to give us all of his expert analysis on those guys in the trenches. It's the position he plays, so there is no better person to talk to us about that offensive line. We've got plenty of talk on the OL coming up for you. We will also have Tim Twentyman join us to talk about his observations from the days of camp where we were not live with practice, so you will hear all about what's been happening. You will not feel left out of anything. Tim Twentyman will get you filled in. Like I said, we are talking all about the O-line on today's show, so I took some time to catch up with new offensive Offensive lineman Halapulavati Vaitai. Big V talked to us about joining this group and what the chemistry is like on that OL so far. Here's what he had to say. My boy Danny Shelton. I walked after practice. I walked into my locker room and uh, and I saw on top of my seat and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And so I was like, thank you, man. And he was like, yeah, man, I'm just trying to, trying to represent, <laughs> trying to represent for Danny. There you go. I love it. I love it. You guys have been uh, together as a team for the first time, uh, really in your time as a lion, uh, these last couple of weeks, what has it been like getting to be with your whole entire team for the first time? It's, 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 it's been fun. Uh, the guys on the line, man, they're, they're hilarious. I love working with Dak, O'Day, and Frank, and Hank. Uh, all of them guys are good. They took me in. You know, they're working with me, and I'm working with them. So it was pretty cool. Um, you know, the last two days we're in pads, so it was really good to finally try and coordinate as a as a team. What were those first couple days back in pads like for you guys to finally be able to to hit somebody and have some actual football back? It's good because you know we have eight long months since. We didn't have OTAs, and so we've been dry for a long time. And so now we get to put the pads on, finally get some action going against the defense, and it's it's fun, really fun. You're joining an offensive line room with a, a bunch of guys that are new to you, but really new to the Lions. It's a totally revamped offensive line from what it looked like last year. Uh, how are you finding that group? I know you said that they're a fun group to hang out with, but how are you finding the, the chemistry meshing so far? I think the chemistry is great. Like, you know, I could do joke around with them and be serious at the same time. You know, we, we're, on, we're probably on the field and, you know, we get, we say a joke or two. And then when we up uh, for a team period, we're down to business. So it's pretty cool to have guys like that. How is it for you working at that right tackle spot? How are you liking uh, working in at, at that position? It's good. I'm loving it. Uh, you know, wherever the organi organization needs me, uh, I'll try to do my best to fulfill that spot. All right. I got to ask you about some of these rookies because they're the guys that we don't know much about yet. And you have at least gotten a chance to spend some time with them. What are your impressions of Jonah Jackson? Jonah's a hardworking guy. Uh, he's tr he tries to excel every day. Uh, he wants to make everything right with Logan too. Both of both of the rookies are really good. Um, they come in every day with their pen and paper ready because uh, you know they're rookies, so they have no idea wh what to expect. But I have a lot of respect for those guys because coming in not knowing anything, but to con to continue to keep working. You know they're hardworking guys, and I have a lot of respect for them. Well, we'll talk with Hank Fraley later on, but what are your impressions uh, of working with him as your offensive line coach? Yeah, Hank is great. Hank is great. Uh, he's not hes not afraid to tell me what I need to work on or what I need to do. And so I like that because then I can actually try to fix it. And 
working with Hank is good. I think it's going to be a fun year. Well, we sure hope it is a fun year. Big V, thank you so much for spending some time with us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hey, Lions fans. Thank you for watching Training Camp Live presented by Rocket Mortgage. We'll be right back. Without technology, we'd probably be closed right now. Detroit has ranked as one of the least connected cities in America. As easy as it is for you to pick up your phone and call a colleague and email them, many people don't have access to that. We understand how important technology is to small businesses. It's allowing us to provide a service. That's why we're pledging millions to ensure Detroit businesses have access to the technology they deserve. Having access can take our community to the next level. Learn more at RocketMortgageClassic.com. Jade is about to buy her first home. And with a verified approval from Rocket Mortgage, she has the strength to compete with cash offers. When you need an edge in the bidding war, Rocket can. Welcome back into Lions Training Camp Live presented by Rocket Mortgage. I'm your host, Tori Petrie, and joining me on set this morning is Tim Twentyman from DetroitLions.com. Tim, you were on our show Monday, but at this point, we've got some training camp to talk about because we've seen it this week. We've got live football. You know, and it, it was funny yesterday watching practice, and you mentioned Lomas Brown off the top and, and him joining us and talking about offensive linemen. What a great perspective you guys are going to get today Absolutely. on that. I sat near Lomas yesterday, and they did the offensive and defensive line rush drills right in front of us. And just to listen to his perspective <laughs> on things and what rep was good, what was. And it, it was just great analysis, and you guys are going to enjoy that today, certainly, because I know I took something from it yesterday. A guy who did it at a high level for a long time to watch those drills. I think you just get another insight into kind of things that maybe you don't look for not playing the position. So you guys are in for a treat with Loam today. Absolutely. And you don't have to be sitting close to Lomas to be able to hear him. No, you can hear him from the other side. Yeah, you can hear him from a bit of a ways away. (laughs) We're doing a new thing today, guys. It's going to be a social poll of the day. We're talking offensive line, and we're going to give you a chance to talk about that with us. So here is our social poll question of the day. Who do you want to see start at that right guard position on September 13th against the Bears, the Lions season opener? Weigh in today using the hashtag. You're going to hashtag LionsTC and then the last name of the player that you think. So you can do hashtag LionsTC Stenberg, hashtag LionsTC Jackson, Wiggins, Abushi. Uh, make sure you get the spelling right on that one. <laughs> Definitely weigh in. And I think we've already got some people who have tweeted so far this morning. So here's where the results are coming in right now. Tim, uh, Kenny Wiggins is leading the way right now, but uh, Jonah Jackson is not far behind him. Well, you got the veteran, and, you know, both those guys ha- have kind of shared reps at, at right guard early on. But I think l- at least yesterday we saw the rookie Jonah Jackson get more of the first team reps. I think they're easing him into that role. We talked about in the preview show, I think last Saturday, you know, when you draft a guy first, second, third round, you expect that guy to come in and contribute right away. So I think there's a lot of time before September 13, but I think when it's all said and done, we might see the rookie there at right guard. So okay. well, you we'll heard have to Tim's see how it plays opinion. out, but that's my, my thought. But is you that guys can weigh in as well. So please tweet your answer, comment in the comment section what you think that starting right guard will be on September 13th. Now, we are in training camp right now, and we aren't in person, but there are some really exciting virtual opportunities happening for you. The Detroit Lions are hosting a training camp auction benefiting Detroit Lions charities right now. So you can go online to DetroitLions.com slash auction. That auction ends tonight at 8 p.m. So go on there and bid on some really cool items. I know there is a Barry Sanders signed helmet. You can also bid, Tim, on a virtual bingo session with TJ Lang and Jason Hansen. How's bingo that with TJ Lang? Yeah. Sign me up. I think that'd be, that'd be a fun time. <laughs> Absolutely. If you guys are uh, avid watchers of talking with TJ, 
TJ absolutely played uh, bingo already with Jason Hansen, and that was a fun thing to watch. And now you can actually participate with them and play alongside them if you bid on this item in the Lions Training Camp Auction. And it also goes to a great cause. So make sure you get those bids in before 8 p.m. tonight. Now, Tim, we've got you on here to talk about your observations from yeah. camp. Before we dive into what exactly those observations are, you write those articles on the website throughout the week. Tell us just what Tim Twentyman's observations are as a concept. Well, it's basically, you know, me watching 90 minutes of practice or an hour and a half, you know, two and a half, two and a half hours. They're going to increase the time here. It's, it's things that pop out to me. I think people, things that people want to see. Obviously, you gravitate towards skill position players, um, you know, the wide receivers, the running backs number nine the quarterback how is that operation working with the skill positions um, and I think people are interested in kind of what offensive line and defensive line groups there are who's playing with who who's getting the reps and so you know I try to analyze that stuff and then there's parts of practice that I just really love I talked about watching the offensive and defensive uh, pass rush drills uh, with Loam and and you know I think people gravitate toward those gr those, those drills um, seven on seven um, you know one-on-ones with the wide receivers and the cornerbacks who wins reps who doesn't so um, it's just me trying to basically watch as much as I can and try to give you guys as much information as I can about what I'm observing through practice. And hopefully that gives you a little insight into what's going on behind us for, for practice. Well, it's perfect because there aren't fans out here at training camp. So in lieu of you guys watching camp for yourself, we've got Tim breaking it down for you and telling you what he saw in practice. So first off, I think the first thing people look for when they come to training camp is the rookies. So what can you tell us about them this week? Well, there's been three that have impressed me early on and you're seeing the first one right there DeAndre Swift the second round pick out of Georgia I think he's just sometimes when you get a young back um, patience maybe isn't a virtue with those guys yeah. especially you know in their in their first few practices but he's a real patient runner from what I've noticed and um, I think one of the areas where he's really excelled early on is in the pass game I think he's dominated those um, you know covered drills against the linebackers when they go one-on-one -on -one. he's made played in, in team drills and I you know he was touted as a, a three down back coming in um, out of Georgia and I think early on this week he's proven that that he can do that and I, and I think he's gonna be a big weapon in the pass game I love it I love it we all love watching rookies and, and then when you mentioned Jonah Jackson, yeah, we talked exactly. off the top. You know, he's been impressive to me, too. Now, he mixed in with Kenny Wiggins like we talked about early on. But yesterday, he got a majority of those reps. And I, I think they're really, you know, wanting to see what he brings to the mix. He's big. He's strong. And, look, there was a, a drill they did on Tuesday where he really impressed me. He was playing right guard, and he pulled around the left tackle, and he just put – um, Reggie Ragland right on his butt and that's a veteran guy who's been in this league a long yeah. time and it was a pancake and it just shows you know his ability to move in space get outside I think he's been really impressive the first week obviously still a long way to go um, but but he's been good and then the other one for me is is Quintes Cephas the the wide receiver okay um, you know obviously the Lions bring back their top three receivers so what a terrific situation for this kid to come into he can learn from veteran guys and it, it, just everything thrown his way he's caught He's just smooth. Like, he's not a burner. He's not going to hit you downfield. He's not a 4-4 guy. But he's got a basketball background, and I think you can kind of see some of that in these drills. He makes contested catches. He's got strong hands. And I've really been impressed with his route running and, and how he can get separation at the top of his route. And so yeah, I think those three guys in particular have stood out to me. I love it. Well, we are talking offensive line on today's show, and – there's really no position that we've seen more variation of, of who's playing where in practice this week. Tell us about that, Tim. Yeah, cross-training is a big part of what these coaches do early on in training camp. For example, you're, you're seeing Tyrell Crosby right there. I think I've seen Tyrell Crosby played every position but center this yeah. first week. And it just goes to, you know, you're trying to find the best mix of guys, the best combination of five guys. And so, you know, we talked about Jonah Jackson. He's played some center as well. Logan Stenberg, who they drafted in the fourth round, He's a guy who played guard his entire career. Well, he's been playing center. He's been yeah. actually been the number two center the last couple days. And so it's really about cross-training these guys and, and being able to play different positions. As you know, it's not a matter of, of you know, 
when or if injuries happen, it's when. And so um, these guys have got to be able to, to adjust, step into other spots. And, and we see it all across the field. We've seen that linebacker. Um, we've seen Jamie Collins Sr. line up inside, you know, at, at the will spot. But we've also seen him at that jack spot. And, and those linebackers, they mix all around. We've seen it with Jared Davis, too. He's played a little bit of that jack, a little bit of the mic. And there's that cross training that we're talking about, guys being able to step in and do different things. At receiver, we see the same things. Quintez Cephas has played outside, inside. Same thing with Galladay. We talked about a terrific touch touchdown catch he made the other day well he made that from the slot in the red zone and so it's just the ability yeah. to, to, to cross train guys do different things and that's really important especially early on in camp and especially with the offensive lineman that you're seeing right there is, is be able to cross train those guys have guys play different spots and so you're covered um, you know when those injuries do happen and, and as you try to find the best five guys well in a COVID-19 world as well there are certain uh, you know things that are in place to make sure that the Lions have enough people on their roster should any people come down yeah. with COVID. And so there are Great some point. benefits to having some versatility along the offensive line, especially with offensive line with, with the way rosters are set up this year. Yeah, and one change with the rosters, especially on game day, is if you keep an eighth offensive lineman active on game day, you can now keep 48 guys active instead of the 46, which is normal. So, again, the importance of having multiple guys up there, guys that can do different things. You're going to see eight guys active on game days, and that gives – teams a lot of flexibility I think one of the things that we had seen in the past and, and teams really wanted to avoid is you suffer a couple injuries especially at tackle now all of a sudden you've got tight ends having to move in and, and play tackle and block and, and that's just not a good situation for anybody so you know kudos to the league for kind of implementing that rule where you get one extra offensive lineman um, so you know things will look a little bit different teams can protect themselves a little bit and so that's important okay one of the biggest things we talked about in our training camp preview show was of course number nine and how he is looking we're seeing him out there on the field getting ready for the beginning of practice right now tim what have you seen from him this week well you mentioned it you know we talked in the preview show about where he was when he got hurt you know top five and yards touchdowns uh, passer rating and i think he's picked up right where he left off behind nice. us. nice he has been really really crisp um and yeah i talked yesterday especially i watched him in 14 periods and i don't think the ball hit the ground i don't think he had an incomplete pass in 14 periods nice. yesterday um look he's got command of this offense obviously look he's an 11 year vet there's nothing any defense can throw at him that he hasn't seen and so there's a comfort level with that you know last year he was dealing with stuff off the field he was trying to learn this this new offense of Daryl Bevels and it just uh, seems like everything is just smooth and there's a comfort level with him he knows the offense he's got his three receivers back his tight end he, the operation is good and they've added some pieces around him and he's just I've, he's really got command of this offense and they've looked crisp and he has especially looked crisp the last this, this first week I love that. And we also heard news this morning. He and his wife, Kelly, are actually donating $1.5 million to a social justice initiative at their alma mater, University of Georgia. We already knew that they were making a donation, but this morning we found out just how big that donation is. So cool, Tim, to see him taking part in the movement that his teammates started this summer to really uh, educate each other and, and, you know, bond over the need for more social justice in our world. Yeah, good for the Staffords, you know, and you can talk about it and, and you know, but when you put you, you know, your money behind it right. um, to make real change, um, you know, kudos to the Staffords, you know, Kelly and Matthew. Uh, that's going to make a big difference, I think, down there in Georgia. Well, you talked about the rookies a little bit, and, of course, we need to talk about Jeff Okuda. Everybody wants to know how he's doing. Tim, what update can you give? Well, the lines are easing him in, and we talked in the preview show, too. Look, you're going to have some ups and downs, but as the number three pick, you expect that kid to come in, um, contribute right away, and, and I think he is. He's going to do that. Um, you know, I think there was no spring. You know, he, I think he had to adapt being on the island, um, you know, the speed and size of some of these guys. I think there's an adjustment there. And, and to his credit, I think he has adjusted. You know, some of the one-on-ones Monday um, looked a lot different on Thursday. You know, I thought he was much better in that regard. Um, you know, he worked mostly the second team early on. They're sprinkling him now. He's getting more first team reps. We saw that yesterday. Right. Um, and he made a play in, a, in a, a team period. He made a diving deflection on David Blaupass that I thought was, was really good play. And so um, look, there's going to be ups and downs with him. They're working him along slowly. They're getting him into the mix. Like I said, they, there wasn't that adjustment period in the spring. So I think you have to allow for that maybe the first week, week and a half. But his reps are going to ramp up. He's going to be a big part of this defense. Skill set wise, mentally, everything 
definitely fits from what you talk with coaches and, and players. And, um, you know, he's going to be a good one. And, and I think we're going to see that Im implement it incrementally. There we go. Increase here through the first couple of weeks in terms of his reps with the first team and his involvement in the defense. I love it. Tim, thank you so much for sharing all your observations. It does so much for those who were not able to come out to camp this year because of COVID-19 precautions. So thank you, Tim, for filling us in on everything we missed. Of course, you can go on DetroitLines.com, watch highlights from the days of practice uh, that you were not here for, that we did not broadcast from. So make sure you go check those out. And of course, in just a few minutes here, uh, training camp practice will be beginning behind us and we'll be talking all about that offensive line. Lomas Brown will join us in just a bit but before we get to that I actually caught up with new offensive line coach Hake Fraley earlier this week to talk to him about how that group is coming together. Here's what he had to say. Hank, thank you so much for joining us. Man, I imagine for a guy who coaches the offensive line getting players back in pads was exciting this week. Oh, it really was. You know, I think not myself, not only me was itching for that. I think the players were itching to just get back in pads and hit each other and uh, just get on the field and play some football. It was exciting. A uh, couple of days in pads here and, uh, you know, we're getting to our day off now and we'll get back at it uh, starting tomorrow. What was that first week of pads like for you guys? What did you see from your offensive line? You know, what I did see is the hard work and effort all, all day. Uh, we weren't clean in it, for sure. You know, you got to knock the rust off. Get of back course. In that yeah, get back in that football shape. Uh, but the effort and, and uh, the finish was there, you know, just like we, we left off last season. And they're just trying to build off of a, a foundation I think we started a few years ago here and, and just improve on that. This is your first year taking over this offensive line room. A lot of new faces in there as well. What can you say about the chemistry and just how that group is coming together and, and how you're meshing with them? I think I think it's gone well. You know, doing all these Zoom calls all off season, you kind of had to build it uh, a little different, but it, it probably built us a little closer because you really got to know each other. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of time on Zoom. You know, just talking not only football and X's and O's, but just everything, general life, get to know each other's family a little bit. So it really, you know, that feel of just instead of being around each other, there was a lot more communication happening over, you know, online here. So I think we, we built that in the off season and just now to be in the room together, um, you know, it's, it's we've grown from there. So it's it's been a great, great feeling. Uh, definitely uh, some new faces in there. But, um, you know, if you want to coach any position in football, everybody wants to coach the whole line. That's we're, we're supposed to be the close knit team, team here in the unit. And that's what we're trying to build here. I would imagine with those Zoom calls, you had kids and pets and wives popping in there every now and then. Uh, for sure. My, on my end, I have a I have a few kids running around uh, my wife and, you know, definitely my little five year old daughter. She was definitely wanting to be on those Zoom calls. Um, but uh, everybody, it was great to see their families on the other side. You know, a lot of our, my O-linemen, our O-linemen in Detroit, they're just starting families. So a lot of those guys are got the young ones running around. So it's good to see. Absolutely. That does bring you closer when you do get to know each other's families. Let's talk about some of those new guys in the room. Halapulavati Vaitai, uh, Big V as he's known, he joins that room. Speaking of a guy who just uh, you know, had a, a new addition to his family. How does he fit into that group and, and how is he doing at that right tackle position? You know, he's been, he's fit in right, you know, really well, I guess, with the guys, you know, and with the social media now and everything else now, they know each other throughout college and they kind of know each other a little bit more before just, you know, back in the day, you just show up and finally meet somebody. But uh, he's fit well with the group. Uh, he's got a great personality. Um, and it's been fun. It's been fun to coach him this past couple of weeks here and then this whole off season. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to him and see what he does on Sundays. So, uh, we got a long ways until we get there, but great guy, great guy. atmosphere he brings to the room, different, you know, approach coming from Philadelphia, you know, winning the Super Bowl. So he has that winning mindset and it's great to see. All right, I got to ask you about the rookies. I know you haven't gotten to see them too much yet because you guys just started practicing football really on the field uh, but what are your early impressions of Jonah Jackson and Logan Stenberg? I think if you just want to talk about both of them at one time they're coachable 
and uh, that's all you ask for them. They give great effort um, and they're willing to learn and they're, they're learning from each other, from the uh, vets. You know, I got a great room in our, our room that our vets are willing to teach those guys other than myself and Coach Yates doing it. Those guys are stepping in, teaching them the fundamentals of what we want to be taught here and the coachability of those two has been great. And uh, the attitude, uh, it's been nothing but smiles with those guys. They can get frustrated. They're getting thrown right in. You know, there was no OTAs and all that to knock off any rust. And uh, so it's been a lot of it fundamental work, but it's, it's been great having those two young men. Well, you've got some consistency, a little bit of it, uh, returning on the offensive line in Frank Ragnall and Taylor Decker. Let's talk about Frank. How has his game improved since you last saw him? Well, you know, um, I think he's, he hasn't fallen off at all. If anything, he's improved himself. It's still early in camp. We're still knocking all that rust off, but his leadership, his quality, you love that about him. You, you know who you're getting every day. It, it's it's going to be Frank. You, there's no dip on his play, uh, his demeanor. Um, he's been great in the room. Uh, you know, and he leads in his own way. His leadership is really shows out on that field, the way he finishes everything and, and competes at every, everything he does. You know, it could be going through shoots. It could be going a one-on-one -on -one pass rush. You go in the team periods. Uh, his, his, his competing uh, is uh, contagious and it rubs off. Well, we don't know where you guys are at on this, but from our side, we're obviously watching to see who ends up playing on either side of him at the left guard and right guard positions. Last year, you guys went with a little bit of a rotation. Is that something that is in consideration for this year? Or are you looking for someone to really consistently fill that role? You know, we want to put the best five out there and we're still trying to figure that out on our end. Um, like I said, we have a really good competition. I joke around with these guys or not even joke, but I tell these guys is, you know, there's teams looking at our room because we're so deep in, in positions, and especially the inside and our competition so so deep and, and really fierce. But these guys are professionals about it. Uh, they've been great with each other. They know what they're set out to do. And, you know, when the, when it's all done, you know, we'll, we'll see where we're going. But we're, we still got a few weeks before we got to settle that in. But uh, these guys are battling it out and, and helping each other along the way. And that's what you you know, that's what O-linemen do, you know. They're fighting for those spots, but yet they're trying to make each other better. I love that. Coach, thank you so much for the insight. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you. We actually mic'd you up at practice this week. Let's take a look at that video. This will be the first time they hit a sled since college. High school days or something, I don't know. College? I know. I just, hey, it's about turning your feet, Kitty. Keeping up with Decker while he's moving the sled. Stay the same every day, right? Consistency. Consistency. Where's Logan? Hey, Logan. On uh, the threes today on uh, first team period, you're going to do a little center, right? Yes, sir. So we'll make sure you get a couple snaps. I need, that's why I had you take them in the yep. walkthrough, okay? Here we go, let's go, let's go. Five bag holders. Let's go. Stop walking over here to get the bags. Sense of urgency. Down the line. Oh, wow. Let's go, come on. Step into them, bag holders. Once he gets to three, we'll switch. Finish it, finish it. There you go, Matt, don't lean forward. Get that post foot. Good, don't fall forward. Stay on that line, cross. Jonah, stop backing up. I want an aggressive set. I want an aggressive set. Sit up. Good. Let's do it again. Firm set. You guys are posting down there, Cross. Sit up. Good. Jonah, come in to him. Sit up. Good. Let's go. Sit up. Sit up. 180. There you go. You're good. Trust him. Trust him. He's a professional quarterback. He'll get out of the way. All right, fellas. Five, Five guys up. Last group, will. we're just going to fill in. Drive, 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 drive. Break. Do it again. Stay lower. Stay lower. Sit up. Stay low. Drive it, drive it, drive it. Break. Good. Next group. You only got two? Sit up. Come on, Matt. Come on, Matt. Come on. Drive it. Drive it. Break. <laughs> Next guy. Next group. That was a hell of a drive, Matt. You guys really drove that one far. Sit up. Come on. Hit it. Drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it, drive it. Break. Good. That's how you drive it. Sit up. Get down there. There you go, Big V. Break. Big V. I want to see now. Get under his pads. But this base has got to stay there so you don't fall off, right? Ready? Sit up. 
Come on, there it is. Break. Nice. Good talk. Come on, stay square. Come on, skip. Break. Good. O'Day. Good. Be ready. Get caught with a flipper. Turn it under. Turn it under. I'm not always opposed to flipper, but if I flipper you guys, I want to spin it back underneath so I can push. Sit on. Come on, drive it, drive it. Break. Much better. Which way you like to face, Frank, today? You tell me. You're the boss, folks. I'm just, I'm just working for you guys. Coach, I work for you. Grizzly man outdoors. Oh. Grizzly man outdoors. Let's go this way. Here we go. Kenny, I want you here. Kenny, you're there, but starting from that side. Sit on. You had your chance. Oh, I thought you were going to punch me, Hank. <laughs> no. Right here. Logan, you're there. Ready? Set up. Right there. Good. He's so far away. And you can see that eyes. And now it's, I'm going to trap O'Day's guy. O'Day stopped him. Great stop. But that's that read around. You went to go attack it. Yep. Don't Good attack in this league, buddy. They don't just run into you. Yeah, we got to keep those pads down. When we get in these 907s, we're rising. Logan, when we're getting in these 907s or team periods, we're getting too high. Stay low. Like you're, they're not running through you guys, no. but when you're high, you don't have any power, and they're coming downhill. You're catching. So. Yes, sir. Nice. Hey, Logan. Nice shot. Working right there, Craig. Working, Craig. There you go. There you go. It's a good set. Nice inside out. The only thing I'm gonna just say is just watch drifting right now. Good job. Good hands up. Come on. Working, 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 working. Good. Wait, stinking hot. Wait, stinking hot. Stay in here. I'm sorry. There you go, Big V. Keep going, Big V. Hey, don't take this hand off. Just, just ride him all the way there. You thought you had him? Don't stop blocking him. I know he did. He jumped it, but he might have been right on time. He might have been right on time. There it is. There it is. Nice, Tech. There. Next guy. Up. Nice. There. Good. Nice. I like the set. Yeah, yeah I did. Do it, do it more. I like it. Ah, there you go, Skip. There you go. Hey, nice job recovering. Nice job recovering. Don't don't let them. They still gotta go there, yeah. right? Good job. There it is. There it is. There you go, Cross. Hey, hey. If he wants to keep taking leverage, run him to the sideline. He was falling. I got it. I got you. Keep him up. Good job there. That's another opponent. You're pancaking him because we would have kept going. You know what I mean? Cross. What what happened was he had Collins going. Like, and he pulled him back up, really? the thing would have collapsed. Really? It would have went all the way around. It was a nice, nice run off the ball, though. Hey, Lions fans. Thank you for watching Training Camp Live, presented by Rocket Mortgage. We'll be right back. Your house brought you together. Like, really together. And although together is great, together with more space is better. With Rocket Mortgage, you get personalized loan options, closing costs, and tax estimates all in real time. So when you need to know what it takes for a home to fit your budget and your family, Rocket can. percent of Detroit families don't have internet access at home. Rocket Mortgage is committing millions to ensure all Detroit students have the technology they deserve. Together, we are changing the course. Learn more at rocketmortgageclassic.com. Welcome back to Lions Training Camp Live presented by Rocket Mortgage. I'm your host, Tori Petri, and right now I am joined on set by Lions legend and WJR radio analyst, Lomas Brown. Lomas, welcome. Thank you, Tori. It's always nice to be here with you. Well, I get that out just then. Well, listen, you've got a lot to get out today because we are talking offensive line, yes. and I am so pumped to have you on the show because... 
Well, Miss, these are your guys. Oh, my God. And I'm, so, I'm happy you're pumped that we're talking about <laughs> the big fellas today because I get pumped talking about them. Exactly. Well, we want you guys to be part of the conversation as well. Uh, we told you earlier about our social poll of the day. The question was, who do you think will be starting at the right guard position when the Lions open the season against the Bears? You can chime in with hashtag LionsTC and then the last name of the player you think that will be. But we also have a trivia question for you, Lomas. We uh -oh. had a trivia question when you okay. were on the other day. <laughs> Today's trivia question is, who is the biggest O-lineman on the Lions roster? That goes for height and weight. Who is the biggest overall? Lomas, there's a lot of big fellas to choose from. Look, they make me look little, so I don't even <laughs> like walking around those big fellas now because I'm not a big, I don't think I'm a big fella anymore in their eyes. Well, you were telling me, I mean, you're way below your yeah. playing weight at yeah. this point. Yeah, I feel so much better, Tori, but yeah, I'm probably about 65 pounds down. But Tori, even at my biggest, I don't know if I'm bigger than some of those guys really? behind me. Really? And how me. tall are you? Uh, six, four and a half. Okay. You got to give me my half now. Okay. I need we'll my half. Your half. We'll yes, give you your you. half. Thank well, you. we want you guys to weigh in. Let us know who you think that is. Uh, tweet the answer. Reply in the comments who you think the answer to that trivia question is. Lomas, Let's talk about these big fellas. What is their role on this team, and why are the big fellas so important? Well, you know, Tori, uh, and I'll start by saying this. I think it's going to be even more important this year because of COVID. And the reason why I say that uh, the health of the big guys is because, again, like other positions, you can't interchange. It's really hard to try to interchange the offensive line. You know, you can move a, de a, a linebacker to defensive line. You can move a, a defensive back down to linebacker. Wide receivers, they could play different positions. Offensive linemen, it's only along that offensive line. So when you have injuries, when you have sickness, then it takes out of the chemistry of that offensive line. And it's so very hard just to plug and play on your offensive line. So it's going to be – even more important for these guys, not only to play well this year, but to stay safe, keep those starting five up there, and keep the chemistry going between that offensive line. Well, Lomas, you said it, the chemistry between those starting five. How important is consistency up there on the offensive line? We saw rotation last year where yes. they didn't have the same five out there every single play. They went with a little bit of rotation at the mm -hmm. guard positions. But in your opinion, what do you think the importance of consistency is? Oh, that, I, I mean, that you have to have the consistency out there. And, and look, to me, the perfect scenario, and I, I think I might have told you this earlier, would be for the young guys, the kind of red shirt this year, sit back. It would be for the older guys, the Kenny Wiggins, the Odea Bushi, for those guys to step up and maybe step into the starting role. And then you have the young guys sit back. They get the opportunity to sit and watch. And to me, Tori, that's the consistency. That's the chemistry that you want. Guys that have already been in the system, that kind of know Daryl Belleville's system, I think those guys are a lot farther ahead than, say, a Logan Steinberg or um, – um, or Jonah Jackson. The Jonah Jackson. So to me, hopefully the, the backup guys from last year could step up and step up into starting roles and you could kind of almost red shirt those young guys this year. Well, it's certainly an interesting year because there are a lot of new faces along yes. that offensive line. Last year, you had Taylor Decker. You had a rotation of, of Joe Dahl and Kenny Wiggins. You had Ragnow at center. You had Graham Glasgow over on the right side, who is now with the Denver Broncos. Yes. And then you had Rick Wagner, who is now with the Green Bay Packers. So that is your right side of the offensive line that's going to be completely yes. different this year. And you look for what will happen at the left guard position, too. But there's definitely some change along that offensive line. You bring in Halapulavati Vaitai. He's going to play that right tackle position. At least that's what it looks like from what we've seen yes. in camp so far. He's still stepped into that role but those guard spots those are where the question marks are. It, it really is and again Tori if the veterans could step up then that wouldn't be so much of a, a question mark going into the season but you got two young guys you got two rookies that have never this is their first
first training camp. Actually, this last couple of days have been their first action in pads. So you are asking a lot for these guys to be able to step in and step into a starting role. That's why I say, man, if we could get O'Day, if we could get Kenny Wiggins, you know, if we could get those guys to just step their game up and maybe step into that starting role, I think it would make things a lot easier. And then along with Hank Fraley, you know, taking over as the offensive line coach. Yeah, there's familiarity with Hank right now, but I'm quite sure Hank wants to do his own things, you know, from what Coach Davidson did last year. So, again, changes all around, not just on the offensive line, but even with the coaching. All right, here's the part that I'm excited to talk to you about, Lomas. Okay. <laughs> the offensive line drills. I want you to tell us what you're looking at. If our fans out there have ever come out to training camp and wished, man, I wish I could sit beside an <laughs> offensive lineman right now who could tell me what I'm watching and what I need to be looking for. Lomas, tell us, so, what is this drill right here? So right now it's more of a alignment and set drill. But why that's so, so very important, uh, Tori, is because, again, when you set as an offensive lineman, you want to know where your quarterback is in that pocket. So we have different sets. You can set short on the guy, meaning you won't take a deep set, and that's going to keep you closer to the line of scrimmage. You could take a deep set to try to get the guy to go around the quarterback. But the most important thing for the offensive line in this drill right here is to know where the quarterback is, where he's positioned at doing that, so I know how far I can go back or I know where the quarterback is in this drill. And we're seeing Logan Stenberg taking yes. some snaps at center right there. He's in that number 61 jersey. That is the rookie out of Kentucky. We will talk more about him a little bit later on in the show. But Lomas, uh, this isn't the only drill that we are going to watch. We will get into other ones. Typically, when you're watching an offensive line drill, what key things are we looking for to say, hey, that was a good drill? So, so the key thing is always the change of the line of scrimmage. Even being in pass block, we want to dominate, meaning us offensive linemen, we want to dominate the line of scrimmage. So we have to change the line of scrimmage, and the way you do that is by uh, being aggressive and pushing the D lineman, um, uh, pushing the D lineman off the line. Tory in the pass protection, look at this. Why don't you just raise an umbrella? Take <laughs> Just picture an umbrella. Okay. And that's how your offensive line wants to look when they're pass blocking. Oh, it I wants like to look like an umbrella. Okay. So your quarterback, he gets the opportunity to stand or step up in the pocket. Anytime it's like an umbrella, that means your tackles, your offensive tackles have taken the defensive ends around the quarterback and your three interior linemen, they have created a wall up front. So therefore, if Matthew Stafford gets any pressure around the back, he's able to step up, still have a clear throwing lane, and still be able to complete the ball down the field. So that's how you know when there you got go. some good pass protection going on right there, Tori. Okay, perfect. <laughs> See, that's why we need you on the show. Look at them. They're forming their umbrella right that's there. That's right. <laughs> well, let's get into talking about the players that are going to be on this offensive line. We'll start over on the left side with that left tackle position. You see Taylor Decker yes. there right there. He was the starting uh, left tackle last year. He's been there for several years now since he was drafted. He played 15 games last season, played the most snaps of any offensive lineman on the Detroit Lions last year. He had eight penalties and allowed four sacks. He got off to a little bit of yes. a tough start last year. Uh, but we do expect him to continue to dominate that left tackle position this year. Yes, and like you said, Tori, he got off to a rough start. But really, over the final 10, ten weeks of the season, he was ranked the sixth best tackle. So, again, he improved this game. And that's what you want to look for guys to improve their game. That's a good stat. Yeah, it really is. And like you said, he started 55 or 64 games we know he's going into a contract year this year, so it's going to be a big year for Taylor. And like you say, he's one of our leaders, Tori. He's one of the guys that we're counting on, not just to be there for 16 weeks and 16 games, but we're counting on him to lead that offensive line and give that offensive line some continuity. Well, you know, we've also seen with those second, third team reps, we've seen Tyrell Crosby yes. out there taking some reps as well. Now, he played last season. It's not like he didn't get in there. He did get in there last year. He actually played all 16 games. Uh, he had six penalties and only 2.5 sacks allowed. Obviously, he didn't play as many snaps 
as Taylor Decker did. Right. But it's kind of looking like they're working on him being that uh, swing tackle yes. that could fill in. And, and I think he does that very well. And look, Tory, I'm telling you, I started 17 of my 18 years in the NFL. My 18th year, I didn't start. I was in the backup role. Oh, my goodness. It is tough being in a backup role because yeah. you got to always be ready, especially mentally. And sometimes on that sideline, mentally, you're not <laughs> into the game. So I felt out of my 18 years that my 18th year was my hardest year because of not starting, because of having to be in the backup role. But that backup role requires you to be ready at any and all times if something was to happen to one of the players in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Dan Skipper is another name to keep an eye on there at the backup left tackle position. All right, we got to go to the center spot because this <laughs> one is the one uh, that I know has you excited. Yes. Tim talked about it earlier in the show, what it's like sitting beside you during practice and watching the one-on-one -on -one <laughs> drills. Now, the one-on-one -on -one drills aren't part of what you will see in today's show. We only are uh, able to show you the very beginning part of practice. But later on, uh, once they get down to things, we see the one-on-ones. And you were watching them yesterday oh. and getting hyped up yes, about I number did. 77. Hey, I wish they'd have had some pads out there for me, Tori. I oh, might yeah? have suited up for one play. I might have been able to give them <laughs> one play. But, Tori, I'm telling you, Frank Ragnall, number 77, that is my guy. I'm talking about tough this guy has come in, started as a rookie, and he has just got progressively gotten better and better, not just over the years, but to me, each and every game, Frank has gotten better. He's a quarterback of that offensive line. He's the heart and soul of that offensive line, and I think everybody takes the cue from Frank. How Frank goes on that offensive line, that's how that offensive line is going to go. I'm looking for this young man to be a pro bowler, all pro player okay. very soon because of the way he's played. And like you say, he got me so fired up the other day when he stonewalled <laughs> that defensive lineman. I was like, yes. So Frank Regnow, that is a he's a man. That That's Absolutely. a grown man, that center right there, Tori. Yeah, I believe that was up against Danny Shelton, who's yeah. Also a grown man, so that is no <laughs> easy rep to take at all. Lomas, I want to get you to give us a little bit of breakdown of Ragnall's technique here. If we can kind of watch what he's doing. Walk us through what we're seeing from him and why he's so good. So I want people to watch when Frank, after he snaps the ball, watch where he gets his hands at. The hardest thing for an offensive lineman is to get your hands inside on the breastplate of the defensive lineman. Good linemen, they're able to do that. You'll see a lot of other linemen, they get wide on these guys. And once you get wide, your hands are wide on a, a defensive lineman, you have no power. Each and every time I watch Frank, he's working on getting his hands inside on the chest plate of those guys. Once you get your hands on the inside of the guys, that's when you can control them. It's almost like driving the car then, Tori. You just stir All them right. and take them the way you want to take them then. So, you know, I'm, I watch Frank and his technique. And that's the number one thing with the offensive lineman, your technique. His technique right now is very, pretty much impeccable right okay. now. Yes. Well, I'm loving the big guy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can absolutely tell. And I can tell everybody from sitting out here with Lomas at practice that that is sincere. He really does <laughs> love Frank Ragnow on and off the camera. Now, there's a couple guys that are taking reps at the center spot as well. You've got to have yes. backups. Uh, in the NFL, especially in a COVID world. And we've seen the rookie Logan Stenberg, yes. like we mentioned earlier, taking some reps at the center position. And Tim talked about it as well. We've seen all kinds of guys playing everywhere along the offensive line. We've also seen rookie Jonah Jackson yes. play at center some. Kenny Wiggins play at center some. Uh, what have you seen just initially from those uh, rookies taking snaps at center? Well, first of all, i like to say that's very smart on Frank Haley, uh, on, on Coach Haley's part, Haley part, is to have these guys going and working different positions. I think you need to do that because you know injury, that's part of the game. It's going to be injury. But the thing I like, uh, Tori, about these young men, one, they seem to be very coachable. 
two, they, they're doing some things right now that I thought would take them a while, meaning pad level. I talked about that with the running backs yeah. uh, on Monday, but it's just as important with the offensive linemen that you start off with good pad level and you maintain your pad level. From what I've seen out here, these guys have been coming off with pretty good pad level. They've been keeping their feet. Another thing to watch, and when I say keeping your feet is, you don't see a lot of guys on the ground. And that's when you get guys hurt when guys are falling on the ground and all on the ground. And coaches will tell you, I think that's one of the biggest pet peeves of a coach is a guy that's always on the ground because they know they can potentially get other guys hurt. So when you watch an offensive line block, when you don't see a lot of guys or you see a lot of defensive linemen on the ground and not a lot of offensive linemen, that offensive line has done their job. So again, practice has been pretty clean from the most part, and that's impressive because these guys hadn't had a chance to put in any work during the off season. Absolutely. Well, we know that the left tackle and center spots are the ones that are kind of locked in there. Mm -hmm. We know who's going to play there, barring any injuries. But the guard spots, yes. we don't know so much. There's one guy who you might see at guard, number 61, Logan Stinson see Jonah Jackson yeah. that is a rookie who has uh, stepped in there and been playing a lot with the first team uh, before we get into talking about the rookies though from last year okay. Joe Dahl was mm -hmm. really who we saw take the most reps at the center spot yes or, I'm sorry at the uh, guard, guard spot mm -hmm. last year uh, he rotated in there with Kenny Wiggins a bit. We saw Ode Abushi take some reps in there as well. But what do you like about Joe Dahl? Well, the thing I like about Joe is, again, Joe is steady. He's a steady player. You don't have to worry a lot about Joe. Joe gets in there and he does his job. Um, again, if I throw a stat at you, Tori, his first year as a starter, he was ranked number 23 amongst the guards, and his pass blocking was a seven. He got a 73 on this pass blocking grade. That's not bad for a first-year starter. It really isn't, especially with some of the things that happened to us last year with Matthew uh, getting hurt and us having to kind of platoon quarterbacks, different quarterbacks right. in. Uh, you know, again, first year of Coach Bevel's offense, so he's learning a new offense. I thought Joe did pretty good. We know they gave him an extension, and I think the Lions – a lot of Joe to give him that extension. And I think Joe is stepping up. I would like to see him step up a little bit more and take that job, Tori. That's the thing these guys got to do. You can't leave it as a question mark. If that's your job, take it. Make sure the coaches know that's your job. And the only way to do that is you got to go out every day and show them that that is your job, that nobody else is going to come in here and take that away from you. And when you do that, not only are you showing the coaches what you're made of, but you're showing those other four guys that you're on the offensive line with. So hopefully Joe will be able to take another step this uh, this season for us at the left guard position. Well, we asked fans who they thought would play the right guard position. We'll chat about that, but who do you think will play left guard? Do you okay. think Joe Dahl lo locks in that spot? Well, okay, I'm going to tell you, I'm kind of disappointed. To be honest with you right now, uh -oh. Tori, I really, really thought that Kenny Wiggins would step up and take that job. I okay. really did. But like you said earlier, we see Jonah in the guard position already. I mean, camp has only been a couple of days. Has Jonah showed the coaches that much in those few days that they got him in the starting position right now? Or has Kenny Wiggins not shown them enough to take that position? So to me, remember I told you the perfect scenario for me on the offensive line this year would be red shirt the two young guys and us, our two older guys step in the starting position that guard. Well... It doesn't seem to be that way right now. And, and that's a testimony to Jonah. If he's pushing that hard and he showed the coaches that, hey, this is his job, hey, kudos to him because, look, this is a cutthroat business. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Jonah Jackson, the Lions traded up to get him, mm -hmm. so they clearly like what he has, and he has played, you know, a, a lot in yes. the training camp at that right guard position. He played at Rutgers for four years before transferring to Ohio State. He wanted to play with tougher competition, right. so he did that. He went and played at Ohio State, so he has played 
at a high level uh, in college. That's him number 73 there, uh, you know, that you're seeing on your screen. And so we've seen a whole lot from him in camp this season. And yeah. I think something to note about him, you know, is that he has experience all across the interior. So he's one of those guys where if you do have him as, as a starter, he can play at different positions. Mm -hmm. But right now we're seeing him work in a lot at right guard. Lomas, I want to ask you this. If you're a veteran on that offensive line, what do you want to see from a rookie in camp to say, all right, I trust you to get in there and start with me on day Great, one? great question. What I want to see from a rookie is, okay, if I'm talking pass protection, a rookie just, you can't get beat right off the snap. That's the one thing we call that a whiff. You can't have a whiff block. You got to be able to keep your body in front of that guy at least for a couple of seconds, especially when you got a commodity like Matthew Stafford behind you like that. So that's the one thing. You cannot get beat cleanly, and I haven't seen him. I haven't seen that happen to him. The other thing is the mental part of it, Tori. I love what you said about him transferring from Rutgers to Ohio State. So what that tells me is mentally this guy knew – for him to get better, he had to step up against better competition. You don't get too many people that do that. And a lot of people will take the easy way out, Tori. He decided to take the tough way, yeah. and it paid off for him. So to me, mentally, he seems like he's ready to step into a starting role if he's forced to do that. And I love that because a lot of times the mental part is the hardest part because you don't know. You just don't know. You're going up against grown men that have been in the league and you you're a young pup coming in, so you don't know. So the mental part is the hardest part, and I'm glad to see that mentally he seems to be a tough young man. Well, you know who does have some good experience under his belt is that right tackle, yep. the guy who looks like he's going to start <laughs> can, at right tackle. Can you tackle. say that name I for can. me, please? I can. Vaitai. Oh, and she I, says it's I, so I smooth. I practiced it a lot over the course of the offseason. We were all just sitting at home, so I had plenty of time on my hands to practice that name over and over because it looks like we will be saying it quite a lot. <laughs> Yes. this year he has been practicing at that right tackle position the Lions brought him in in free agency from the Eagles he has won a Super Bowl yes. with them what do you like about Vitae man big big that's the first thing Tori you walk up next to him you'd be like oh my goodness that <laughs> is a large human being right there that's the first thing I like but the one thing I like is where he comes from I mean in he played behind two very, very good offensive tackles in Philadelphia. He played behind Jason Peters, all pro, all everything, left tackle. And he played behind Lane Johnson, who was their all pro right tackle. So to me, he got some great tutelage from those guys. He got the opportunity to sit and watch all pros play. And when he got his opportunity and had to step in there, he did a pretty good job being able to swing, Tory. I seen him play right tackle. I right. seen him play left tackle. So that's good because, look, Tory, I was mostly a left tackle. I, I got a little <laughs> loss going over to that right tackle position. So when I see a guy that can do both like that, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with the guy. So he gave up two sacks last year, even though I know he wasn't a full-time starter. But that's good. And he has super Super Bowl experience. So those are things that you can't get, you can't replicate. You can only, uh, you know, go through those experiences. And Big V, that's what I'll be calling him, a Big Vitae. That's what <laughs> I'll call him this year. You know, he's gone through it. So I think he's going to be a great addition for us on the right, on the right, um, right tackle for us. And hopefully he'll be able to help the young fella Jonah if he's in there at right guard. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that pretty much covers all of the guys on the offensive line that look like they have a, a shot at starting roles this year but the depth is important too yes. we know that we know the injuries happen uh, and that offensive line is going to be an important one to stay healthy but if they don't you got to have guys who can step in and I thought something that Hank Fraley said in my one-on-one -on -one with him was very interesting he said teams from around the league look at the Lions and say hey that is a team with good depth. We wish we had depth like that on the offensive line. What do you think of the I, Lions? I depth? agree. I agree 100% with them. Anytime you got three guys, you got Kenny Wiggins that can play both guard position. You got Terrell Crosby that can come in and play both tackle position. Uh, you got the young fella Stein, Stein.
chamber who can probably play both uh, guard positions and center. Right. So, you know, you got these guys. You got Ode Obushi who can come in. So, yes, that is a great problem to have, and Hank knows that because he knows it's going to be a war of nutrition with these offensive linemen, especially now. I, get, keep the, hate, I hate to keep bringing it up, Tori, but with the COVID-19, you know, that's just kind of like that invisible enemy that you really can't control. So, you know, you got to have depth, and I think this year depth at every position is going to be so critical this year, but especially on your offensive line for the reasons we talked about earlier, the chemistry, just all the things that you need to go well for your offensive line, for your offense to flourish, and for your team to flourish this year. Well, Lomas, we asked the fans who they thought would be the starting right guard on September 13th against the Chicago Bears. That was our social poll of the day. We asked you guys to weigh in with the hashtag LionsTC and then the last name of the player you thought that would be. Let's see who Uh that is going to be. Uh Lomas, the fans think... They're pretty uh, sold on it being Jonah Jackson. So they're not with you. You said you thought it would be a veteran. The fans think it's going to be Jonah Jackson. Yeah, I mean, you know, really, like I say, my perfect scenario would be a veteran to be in there. But, hey, if that young man, if that young rookie with the talent he has, like I say, if he comes in and he's playing so much better than the guys behind him, you don't have a choice but to put him in there. And, hey, kudos to him because he's worked hard to get to that position. And, look, when I came in in 1985, I didn't want to be on the, on the bench. I didn't want to be second <laughs> string. So I came in with the mindset that I wanted to start my first year that I got here. So I'm glad that I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad the fans feel that way. Again, we just gonna have to see because Tori, it's only been a couple of days. It's so many looks Jonah Absolutely. has to see. So many different looks that Kenny ha- has seen and gone against. That's why I gave Kenny the advantage. But hey, kudos to the young man for stepping up and making it a real competition. Well he was at 45%, but Logan Stenberg, who's also a rookie was at 25 tied with Kenny Wiggins. <laughs> so really, we'll see what happens here. Obviously, it's not up to the fans. The coaches and uh, scouts have to make an assessment on these guys, which will be difficult in a preseason, in a uh, training camp that has no preseason yes. games where it's really shortened and they have a truncated amount of time to assess these guys and see what they have to offer. Now, we asked you to participate in our social poll. We also wanted you to participate in our trivia question. So let's take a look at the answer to that question. The question was, who is the biggest offensive lineman on the Lions roster? Lomas, do you have any guesses? Well, I'm going to go with Big V. Is it Big V, it's, the big newcomer? It's close, but it is actually Dan Skipper. Oh, my. Dan God. Skipper is six foot nine and 325 pounds. Now, now that's a human being. That's a lot of human being right there. My, I did not realize Dan was that big. Yeah, oh. he's a little bit taller than your six four and yeah. a half. And a half. We can't forget the half. So that is a big man right there. There's a lot of those big fellas on this offensive line. That is certainly uh, important for the Lions this year, the big fellas on that offensive line. And Lomas, I really appreciate you weighing in on what those exactly uh, will be and how they will contribute along this offensive line. Now, I think we're actually getting a little bit of breaking news right now. Unfortunately, it is not news uh, on the good side of things. We are hearing that the Detroit Lions have announced that they are not going to be able to host fans at their first two games this season. They say they will figure out uh, what will happen with those games after that. That actually takes them up to November because Mm. of the way the schedule plays out. The first two home games are in September and October, but unfortunately we will not be seeing fans at either of those games. Actually, I got to catch up with Rod Wood on this subject a little bit earlier. Here's what team president Rod Wood had to say. Rod, thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, we wish it were under better circumstances. Obviously, we heard the news today that there will be no fans at the first two games at Ford Field. What went into that decision? Well, we we had to make a decision uh, far enough in advance, I think, to be fair to our fans and let them know uh, what the plans were. We're continuing to work with the state and uh, the NFL and health officials to evaluate the situation. And it became very clear that uh, it wasn't going to be something that was available for the first two games. Um, so we decided to make the announcement early to let people make their plans and uh, 
hold out the hope that uh, by the time we get back for our, our third game, which is thankfully the way the schedule fell early November, there's a lot of things that can improve and change that uh, we can get fans in for the last six games, and that's the hope, and that's what we're going to plan for. Obviously still a lot of unknowns, but what can you tell us about what may happen in November? Well, I think a lot of it will depend on, on where the state stands and how the virus is behaving. And uh, I think one of the things that uh, will be a focus is how it goes with uh, kids going back to school and universities opening, and, and hopefully that goes well. And uh, there are going to be a few teams in other states that are going to have fans, I think, the first two games, and hopefully that goes well and we can learn from them and that can get everybody more comfortable. And uh, as I said, the way the schedule fell, uh, you know, we have some time. So hopefully uh, we can learn from what happens at school and universities and other teams and we can be prepared and, and work with the governor to have fans for the rest of the season. For season ticket members who are looking at this news and trying to decide what they are going to do now, what options do they have? Well, they, they have the options of, of continue to uh, opt in for the remaining six games. Uh, we're going to have two three-game packages that will be in the uh, communication today, and they can choose one of those three games. Um, and then uh, they can keep the rest of their money on deposit as a credit towards next year. Uh, we're giving them a lot of financial incentives and lion's loot and other things to encourage them to do that. Uh, so far, we've, we've had some communications with fans. We've had very few that have chose to opt out and not continue to be uh, considering coming to the games. And, in, and within the group that opted out, very few have act, asked for a refund. So hopefully that trend continues, and uh, we've got great support from our fans, and I want to continue to have that. We'll continue to communicate with everybody throughout as more information becomes available. And uh, obviously, I think everybody's used to this being an incredibly unusual time and uh, we're, we're facing it, and uh, we'll do the best we can to make it a safe environment when we open up and have fans in the building. While we obviously understand it is disappointing news, of course, for you guys and for fans, what is your message to fans who are hearing this news for the first time today? We're as disappointed as you are. I know the team is, the players are. It's going to be very odd to be in Ford Field and any other stadium, for that matter, without fans. Uh, but it's a very odd year, and we're, we're all dealing with things that uh, we've never dealt with before. Hang in there with us. Uh, enjoy the games on TV. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in November back in the stadium. Rod, thank you so much. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Tori. Thank you, fans, for watching Training Camp Live presented by Rocket Mortgage. We will be right back. Without technology, we'd probably be closed right now. Detroit has ranked as one of the least connected cities in America. As easy as it is for you to pick up your phone and call a colleague and email them, many people don't have access to that. We understand how important technology is to small businesses. It's allowing us to provide a service. That's why we're pledging millions to ensure Detroit businesses have access to the technology they deserve. Having access can take our community to the next level. Learn more at rocketmortgageclassic.com. <laughs> The Martins here just realized they outgrew their home, so they used Rocket Mortgage to finance their next one. Need to know if your next home fits your budget and your family? Rocket can. Welcome back to Lions Training Camp Live presented by Rocket Mortgage. I'm Tori Petri, joined on set by Lomas Brown. We've been talking about the offensive line mm -hmm. all show long, but we just heard from team president Rod Wood about the announcement that the Lions will not have fans at their first two home games this yeah. season, and then they will reassess the situation after that. Lomas, this is huge news on the Lions front today. What do you think that will do to the atmosphere, to the players, to the game with having no fans. Tori, I just can't imagine it. I mean, again, me playing 18 years, playing at the great University of Florida in front of 90,000 fans and, you know, not to have fans in the stand. I just remember when we used to be tired as an offensive lineman and it's third and one and you needed something to help get you up. It used to be the fans. You know, you would hear that extra cheer and they'd be like, okay, yeah, let's get this done. 
But it, it's just going to be hard. I, I know guys are going to have to self-motivate themselves, and we're professionals. You're supposed to be able to do that. But, my gosh, man, we're going to miss the fans because they really, truly are part of the experience and, and of the game, too. Absolutely. Yeah. But the – NBA and MLB yeah. have done a good job on yes. TV making their games still entertaining without mm -hmm. fans, and it looks like football will have to do that, at least for some teams, because the NFL is going city by city. And, of course, uh, according to state and local guidelines in Detroit, having fans is just not possible at Ford Field this year. Like Rod Wood said, they wanted to give fans enough notice to be able to decide what to do with their season tickets. So now, fans, you have a choice to make, and we will see what happens with those other home games at Ford Field once November comes around. But, of course, there's no fans at training camp, and we True. are making the most of that. We are bringing you guys inside training camp as well as we can with Lions Training Camp Live, and we have another show for you guys on Tuesday, and that show will be looking at the wide receivers and tight ends. The well, divas. Yeah. Okay. But we, your, your friend, Herman Moore, yes, will that's be joining my guy, us. My guy, Herman Moore, number 84, number 84 in your hearts, <laughs> but number one in my heart there. But, no, I'm, I, I'm going to be excited to hear what Herman has to say about the receiver. And he got a great group of guys to talk about, too. As did you. You had a great That's group right. to talk about. We will hear <laughs> from 1020 Men on his observations from the weekend on Tuesday. The players have off on Monday, so we will hear about everything that happened during today's practice, Saturday, Sunday, uh, from 1020 Men on Tuesday morning. As I said, Herman Moore will join us, and we will also have Lions wide receivers coach Robert Prince mic'd up, so you'll be able to hear from him as well. So lots of good stuff on Tuesday's show. We've had lots of good stuff uh, throughout this first week of camp already and it's been a really fun time Lomas we appreciate you joining us and talking with us both about the quarterbacks and running backs and the offensive line thanks Tori anytime you need the big guy call on them just call the big fella all right we got you we got you I don't think this is the last time we will be seeing Lomas Brown on Lions training camp live we appreciate you guys joining us today we will see you on Tuesday and for now we will leave you with the highlights from the first week of training camp Thank <laughs> you.